you know, my dear brothers and sisters, that we are not getting younger. We are getting older. And getting older means, inshallah, requires to be wiser. And wiser doesn't mean you don't do some drastic decisions in your life from time to time. Wiser doesn't mean you just take the punch. You never punch back. The word mujahada is very interesting. Allah says, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ هُوَ سَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمِ Jahidu here means exercise the mujahada because the shaitan will never leave us alone. So mujahada is that constant struggle against the nafs, against the shaitan. Remember, we have two big enemies. And the nafs is stronger than the shaitan. The nafs is the enemy from within. Shaitan is the enemy from outside. I always give this example to my students, telling them, Burg burglar will always try to come out from far. The burglar doesn't live with you. But the traitor works, lives with you. That's why he's called traitor, because he was, he was allowed sanctuary and trust, but he broke the trust. That is the nafs. The nafs opens the door for the burglar. Make his job easy. Let him struggle at least. If he wants to steal, let him uh, climb the fence. Let him cut himself a little bit while he's coming. Let him, let him be tackled. Don't make his job easy. That is what the nurse does for the shaitan. It makes his uh, entrance <coughs> to our life very easy. And that's why it was the nafs that disobeyed Allah first. Because there was no shaitan. There was no shaitan. When shaitan became shaitan. What, what do you mean? No. Yeah. There was no shaitan. When Allah commanded the malaika, including Iblis, to do sujood to Adam alayhi salam, there was no shaitan. Oh, yeah. So who made shaitan sin? His own nafs. His own nafs. He was arrogant. Mm -hmm. So yourself, yourself. Yourself, if it is not disciplined, it will ha harm you and hurt you so much. It will harm you and hurt you so much. And this is what Islam does. Islam, through the tarbiyah, through the tazkiyah, through the akhlaq, makes the nafs obedient. So, it, it makes the nafs, na'udhu billah, arrogant, greedy, hasud, meaning hasad. All the diseases that we know and that we don't know, ostentatious, ujub, bartakapur, this is, this is what the nafs is going to do. But it doesn't need the shaitan. Mm. If you have arrogance, you don't need shaitan. Don't blame it on shaitan. Like and the evidence in Ramadan, mm. all the shayatin are in jail. Why many of us still sin? In Ramadan, people break fast. In Ramadan, people curse. The shayatin are all in jail. We know that. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, when Ramadan comes, three things happen. All the gates of paradise will be widely open, meaning Allah is inviting anybody for tawbah. Make tawbah, Allah forgives you. All the sins you did before. He locks and seals all the gates of hell, meaning he doesn't want to put anyone in Jahannam unless you insist. And the third one, all the shayateen will be in jail, locked up. So where do we get the sins from? It's the nafs. I'm saying watch out yourself more than you watch what shaitan. Shaitan, of course, is there to receive us. Like a phone, I always explain a phone. The phone, the problem, with the phone is the SIM. If you remove the SIM, the, the phone doesn't work, doesn't receive calls, mm -hmm. nor send calls. You can't buy calls without the SIM card. So the SIM card is the nurse. Mm -hmm. 
So the transmission, cellcom or Maxis, is transmitting, is transmitting them. But you will not receive because the nurse is under control. But if you put that back, halas, it will, that's the heart. That's the heart. So the heart has to be under control. How do we, how do we control the nafs? Allah Azza wa alhamdulillah, if we just follow what the Prophet did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we'll be okay. Recite the Quran. Learn the Quran. Recite it. Read it. Even when you don't understand. It's a purification. Do you know exactly how the detergent fights the stain in your cloth? But you do it. Okay, do it. You should say, no, I don't exactly what is that chemical... Uh, uh, equation, no, 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 just wash. <laughs> just put your clothes and let the machine blah, blah, blah. That's it. So that's reading. Re read, at least read. You don't want even to put your clothes in the machine and let the machine work, and you want your clothes to be clean. Don't try to understand the details. If you can, alhamdulillah. If you can't, you don't have time. There are many other things to do. There is a lunch to prepare. There are uh, children to send to school. Class, there are a lot of things besides washing the clothes. So, what I am saying here is that let's pay attention to the nerves. Praying five times a day is a form and a vehicle and a mean of purification of the soul on time, highly recommended in Jama'ah, seeking knowledge like us. Purification of the soul, meeting and greeting the good ones, meeting the salihin, the good people, meet people who are salih, who are better than you. You know they are better than you when it comes to, you know, adhering to Allah's commands. Uh, visiting the grave, it reminds you, akhirah. The more doesn't remind you akhirah, the more reminds you dunya. When you enter one utama, there is nothing about akhirah. There is the same 40%, 60%. But when you go to places of akhirah, such as hospitals, close to akhirah. Hospital means you are, when you enter hospital, it means you are about to go to akhirah. Remember that. When you go to hospital for any treatment, it means you are one step closer to mati. Oh, okay, so behave. When Allah gives you a chance and you come out from the hospital, oh, why do you forget about him? Just a few hours, you worry, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, make it easy. Ya Allah, good news. Now you are out. Where to go? Suppose you go at least masjid pray. No, you're going somewhere else. Uh, visiting elders. Elders remind you also akhirah. Stop meeting only people who are younger than you. People who are younger than you, they, uh, they increase more uh, stress. What do I mean? Because you see her skin is fair, <laughs> while your skin is... But when you see it, Ma'ji, Allahu Akbar. One day you become like that, yes. One day you become like her. I cannot walk fast. That much. She also was strong and she used to give orders and she used to be boss. Now look at her. She's sitting on the wheelchair. So do good before. These are the things that are going to soften us, my brothers and sisters. We need really, we are Nashku. That is a problem, by the way. Nashku Qaswat al Khalb. We are really, really, my dear brothers and sisters, suffering from the heart is very harsh very tough. The heart is supposed to be very smooth. The smoother your heart is, the better your life will be. The heart is not a bone. Even the bone breaks. Our hearts, if you measure them, Allah says that they are harder than the rocks. We shouldn't be like that. The Muslim shouldn't be like that. So, what helps me, inshallah, to soften my heart is Follow, follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, he loved to be with one of his kin. Most of us love to be with the rich, the tansaris. We like to, 
look at you. If you enter, if you enter a gathering and you want to be with the IB, there is a problem with you. Be with those who are normal, don't greet them. I see it in some of your, uh, what do you call that? Gatherings, weddings usually. Mm -hmm. You see the people, the, the, the kampung people. Special people. And then you see the people who, from their behavior, you know. Reserve. Who <laughs> like this up. Where are you going, my friend? Look down a little bit. When they bury you, they don't bury you in sky. They bury you on earth. So get, get used to it. So you can see it, subhanAllah. No. Rasulullah this ummah is given victory because of the, the weak ones. So be with them, he said. Sallallahu alayhi wa Hang, hang with the, those who, you know, normal people. Yeah. Doesn't mean you don't meet with, uh, but, but I'd rather be with those people. There is rahmah there more. So these are the things we need to keep in mind before this great month comes of Ramadan. So that when it comes, we are ready. Not we, we, we already pass one week, then our heart starts softening. No. Now, so when, inshallah, from day one, we start accumulating the hasanat, inshallah. And uh, please have a program, make a program, and dedicate yourself for it. Less contact with people in Ramadan. Only what you call minimum. Only necessary. Less contact. It's one month. Focus on Allah. Allah should be super priority in Ramadan. In our life should be priority. In Ramadan, super priority. Because the people you are trying to give uh, so much uh, time to, will not give you time, will not even follow your janazah. Keep in mind, <coughs> what is the objective of fasting? It's a taqwa. When we fast, our objective should be to, to inshallah, attain the taqwa. What is taqwa? Taqwa is that barrier that you make between you and Jahannam. By adhering to the commands of Allah and staying away from His prohibitions. Something haram. Why are you near it? Something wrong. Why are you around it? If something is haram, stay away from it. Who, who? Example. If liquor is haram, Drinking alcohol. Why are you near a bar? What are you doing there? This is very important. Our salihin, they were even nervous to pass by a place where there is liquor. Unless they don't know, they, they didn't know that there was, uh, they passed. So you see them deviating because they don't want to be, subhanAllah, near something that displeased Allah. Double your ibadah in the last 10 days. In the last 10 days, double everything. If you used to donate one ringgit, donate two. If you used to pray for two rak'ahs, pray four. Double everything. If you used to read one juz, read two juz. Rasulullah Sassim was like that. Why? Why it's very important? Because you are telling Allah, Ya Rabb, here is the end of Ramadan. It could be the end of my life too. It's, it's a metaphor. The end of Ramadan, I double. Ya Allah, when also time comes for me to go, in that last year, give me things to do more, 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 more. Inshallah, when I go back to, to you, I go with, with, plus. So the end of your life, you doubled effort. And Rasulullah was, Sallallahu Alaihi was like that. Before he died, last year he died, he doubled everything. And some Sahaba knew it just from the fact that he was doing a lot of ibadah. Subhanallah. Most of us, when we get sick, we say, no, I don't want to pray because I'm sick. It's the other way. Dhikr of Allah. Mention Allah. Offer salawat to Rasulullah. 30 days only. They will pass like.